Greetings, loyal citizens. Friend Computer welcomes you back to Dungeon Complex. You may recall from our last mission recording that Mac RDOS, Roger RRUN, Love RBOY, and Gibson OHKD completed their mission guarding a B3 inspector and Roger was promoted to Orange Clearance, then later Mac RDOS, Gibson OHKD, and Love RBOY were assembled for another troubleshooting mission to handle an R&D mishap. We now return to that mission already in progress. Alright, you guys continue on to PLC. How do we find uh, the new B3? What does it taste like? Different than the old B3. The new one tastes a lot like classic, except it uh, has some sort of sweeter flavor. You don't know what it tastes like because you don't know what cherry tastes like. So it's got a different flavor than the B3 Classic, but it's, it's a little bit sweeter. It's just different. You guys make it to PLC, you know where that's at. There's a long line like always. People are trying to get their stuff, trying to get their various goods that they want, spending their plastic creds, spending their regular credits on new hats, bandanas, stuff. You guys can shop while you're here too. There's various stuff on display, new fashion accessories, things like that. So if you guys want to pick up anything while you're here, it's a PLC, so it's what they have in back is a mystery. What they have on display is mostly the fashionable upgrade stuff. So if you want like frills for your sleeves or new bandanas, shirts that fit you for a change, shirts with buttons, shirts with zippers, you know. Patches. Patches, yes. Different socks. The only thing you're guaranteed is what's on your list. If they have it on display, you're pretty much pretty sure you can get it as long as you have the credits for it. Otherwise, right. it's requesting it and seeing if they have it. If it says, all right, team, uh, anything else we need? I already made one suggestion. I mean, uh, I'd like to, I feel like I'd like to buy some stuff. So outside of the list. Yeah, outside of the list. What was your suggestion? It'll be a nice surprise once we get up to the camp. You're the team leader. That is correct. Says it right there on his badge. Yeah, I mean, I want to buy some bandanas. Okay. Like three. Red or black? I mean, red because. Well, of course, because you're red um, plants. Why would yeah. you downgrade yourself like that? That's gross. I'll Never know. I just have to check. All right. Red bandanas are uh, going pretty cheap. One credit right now. Oh, word. Yeah, I'll take three. Then. Cool. You're able to find those at a vending machine, actually. Oh, okay. You don't have to wait in line for that. It's a square red cloth. Perfect size to fit around your head. We're up. I was thinking more of a protection leader. Do you think could maybe have more than one protective suit? Honestly, that's a solid question. Yeah, we can definitely request it. Would you like to add it to the bottom of the request, or would you like to forge the top of the sheet and change that one to a two or a three? Uh, I would, in fact, like to uh, hide the sheet out of view and uh, pantomime that I'm uh, adding it to the bottom. Roll me a stealth to hide doing this from your teammates, and everyone else can roll a surveillance. Uh, because you're doing it against each other, Don't you're not trying to roll lower, you're rolling a number, then adding your number. Okay, I'm going to use my panache point so that I can uh, do two rolls. Alright, the number to beat is 27. I did not do that. I got 24. So he's able to stealthily pretend to add something to the list, but not actually add it. No one catches it. You just trust your team leader. He must be adding. You said he was going to add a suit. And... As always, everything sounds tip top. Uh, anything for you to add, Macar? You know what? Uh, the little hand cloths that I have, I only carry one, so... No, we're gonna be having to handle hazardous material. We're gonna. I'm the hygiene officer. We should just get like a bunch of like little hand cloths, like, okay. at least like two for each person or something. All right. So I write down eight hand cloths, and in the space where where I should have wrote protective suits, I write down 100 bags of algae crisps. <laughs> <laughs> can't be mad at it. All right, you guys make it to the front line after a long period of waiting in line. With your request form, you submit it as is, sign it, team leader. Correct. And uh, the item that I surprised is another experimental mini-nuke. Oh I request God. two mini-nukes. Double the mini-nuke power. So that's submitted. You guys wait around to see if your order's fulfilled. A guy walks off, a bunch of little robots go around the warehouse picking up stuff and filling your order, so a little box gets filled up while you wait. You guys get to watch a little manifest as things slowly get put in your cart. You get to watch your cart get filled. You get to watch as, once your cart gets filled, you get to watch it as it's on its way to your counter. So you get to follow the view screen of a little cart on its way when it's full of full of your stuff. Hand cloths uh, are limited to supply. We will get 17 of them, though. Wow, that's funny. Because you guys are wow. a priority mission. That's way more than I, than I even requested. That's great. They're extra small hand cloths. They're the size of, like, a small napkin. <laughs> so they're, like, one-fourth of a bandana. Uh, the next thing I'll roll for will be the extra mini nuke. That I rolled high enough that you do get. <laughs> so we have two mini nukes. You have two mini nukes. Holy fuck! Third thing shit. I'll roll for is a hundred bags of algae dome crisps. Is that a, a hundred bags of algae crisps? <laughs> you guys get forty-three bags of algae crisps. 
No charge to you, it's for this mission, obviously. As long as your equipment officer fills out the form later, explaining why they all disappeared or whatever, that's up to yeah. them. Yes, because they're, they're delicious. You know, so they'll yeah. familiarize ourselves with the company and the product, yeah. and, then and then also, we eaten. do need fuel in our bodies to fill out this awesome mission for Frank Computer, and now Gita Chris, the delicious treat, will fill ourselves with what bodies need, and that's algae and patriotism. Everything except for the scrub bot and the speedy clean brush is dumped out on a counter in front of you out of a box. You don't have to find a way to carry 43 Algetum Chris and all the other equipment you guys are now been issued. But there it is in front of you, so start shoving stuff in your pockets, I guess, and figure out how you're gonna carry. You can like shove it inside of your clothes. Uh, do you think that we could maybe try to eat some of these? We could definitely pop open a bag. Just to like put a dent in. Oh, well, that'll be up to our team. Uh, it's up team leader and your equipment officer. That's equipment at this point, so... Algidum crisps are meant to... They're caloric energy for our mission. So they're meant to be eaten. They're the, the tool that is meant to be eaten. So you go ahead and pop open three bags of Algidum well, while you guys sort well, out this equipment? you know what? I agree with Asian, and I also agree with the allocation of equipment. Great job on both of your jobs. Love our boy. And All that wisdom. Yes. All right, so you guys crack open some bags and start eating some Algidum crisps while you sort out the rest of your equipment. You now have 40... Right? 40 bags of how you Chris? 40. <laughs> and all the other equipment to sort out. Just want to take a slight little break before the before we wrap up this. Is everyone happy? <laughs> Is everyone Always happy? Yeah, it's great. Awesome. Awesome. This looks stunning. I'm so happy with how this is turning out. Let's hand out some chips or something. <laughs> Alright, so you guys crunch away on the Algetums, the light, salty flavor. You guys enjoy those while you figure out what to do with all the equipment. Well, I guess our team leader has to distribute the well, equipment. Well, you're an equipment officer, so you have more control would, than team leader. Would it be okay for me to distribute the equipment, team leader? Absolutely. We got a red comm link. I'm going to go ahead and clip that onto myself. Click. Uh, click. Spray can of body cleanser for you, our happy friend. Oh no, yes, and hygiene officer. A spray can of body cleanser. All right, Axe Body Spray, let's do it. Yeah, Axe Body Spray, whatever that is. An MTK-1, which I think probably would go to Team Leader. MTK is the multi-purpose tool kit. Yeah, Usually it goes to the equipment officer because that's equipment. That's how you maintain the equipment. To your prerogative. That makes sense. I'll stick with the uh, prescribed usage. ILTR-1, that's from you, Team Leader Gibson. Emergency. I'm going to take up my familiar egg. Um, I'm quite a big fan of this tool. Opens with your tongue, of course, and you can write down whatever you want on it. So we've got an easy does it, which may be hygiene or happy. Happiness Officer Mac, could you? One of those. I'll take whatever is allowed. Two wide awakes, probably our happiness officer. Take both of those? I will hold on to them. So this here multi quarter will stay with me. There's only one protective suit here? Team leader, this is probably for you. Right, you that is at, correct. You look at the protective yeah. suit, it seems to be made of a a plant-based material, greenish in color, so thin, a very thin material that you can get into. Has a zipper in the back, has sort of a plastic front shield where your face is at. Plasticky gloves over the hands and plasticky boots over the feet, but the rest appears to be the green plant-like material. Before anybody can touch it, a touch it, Gibson says, nobody touch that. It's green. You need to consult for a computer right away. See why we have been uh, issued something that could be potentially implicating in treason. This is clearly an error mm -hmm. in uh, PLC, and uh, I won't stand for it. This is why you're a team leader. Yeah. Good catch, Gibson. You report the suit, which is immediately taken away and returned back to a green clearance there. They don't know what they're thinking. Apparently, the high priority of this mission got that ship down here to PLC. The bots here didn't recognize. Must be some sort of communist plot. Good thing you caught it before anybody put that green suit on and implicated themselves in treason. You, you guys are now set to go on your mission with no protective suits. <laughs> This one. Wouldn't want to be treasonous now, would we? You would not. I don't even know the meaning of the word. I've got a skin core sample model six for a hygiene officer. Clank, clank. And then there's also an emergency mini nuke that appears to uh, there's two of them. be tongue activated by. Oh, and there's two! Actually, two mini nukes. Only one of them appears to be tongue activated. Word. Uh, so since as the equipment officer, I think I'll hang on to the one that's not tongue activated. And perhaps team leader, you would like the one that is uh, tongue activated by your tongue. Correct. Solid plan. All right. So maybe we head to our ND and get our scrub bot inner speedy clean atomic brush. Do you like the speedy clean atomic brushes? They came in handy last time. Uh, we were deployed them. 
I think that was uh, with the Lover Boy too. Gotta keep pushing for that fortune and fame. Equipment officer, if you would like to determine how that other mini nuke works, you can roll nuclear engineering. Eleven, and I needed a threes. So oh yeah, you, know, you can't figure out how it works. Doesn't appear to. There's no tongue activation pad. There's oh. no button. You know what? I'll have another look at this whenever we need it, if we need if it. It comes down to it. Yeah, we might. We may not even. Who knows? See, I hope we usually one nukes enough. So you guys make it to R&D safely. There's no line to R&D and Max is celebrity there, so you guys get quick and easy service. They give you condolences. They already heard somehow through the grapevine the rumor of your clone brother already dying. His record's even better than yours. You both have really high records in R&D. So you get all the condolences. You're ushered right away to the front of the R&D line and immediately given everything on your list unless you want to add something to it. Uh, what you think, team leader? Maybe a second speedy clean brush. And of course, you as an R&D employee, Mac, would know anything you've tested at R&D you can also request. I'll put in a request for his squeaky squeaky clean brush, because that's the team leader. If we could get some sort of protective vials or something that we could put samples of whatever we have to collect in R&D tested, approved, fucking, you know, kid tested, mother approved safety vials that can hold whatever substance that we have, dangerous substance that we have, and contain it for safe travel to complete our mission. All right, they can offer you three glass tubes, and they will say that if you're collecting a sample, it's probably your multi-purpose toolkit has something included in it to collect a sample if you have an equipment officer. That's usually included in the mission if Frank and Peter had something like that in mind. All of the other equipment will be granted. Just cover bases. You'll get two speedy clean metallic brushes, so two brushes and one scrub bot. It's already active, it's ready to go. Roomba-like device, except sort of domed on the top, with little scrub brushes on its feet, rolls out. It'll follow whoever in your crew has the comlink orders, otherwise it'll be in the general area cleaning around that person. All around you, it's just cleaning the area as you guys walk along wherever it is you guys are going. Make sure if you go into an auto car or some other places, you might need to pick it up to get over some obstacles, but otherwise it just follows wherever you guys go. You guys are all geared up now if you'd like to figure out how to get to this room. Uh, seven in an auto car. Well, that's a roll, so who wants to roll an auto car? I rolled seven and I need a six. All right, so you very slightly fail. You punch an auto car. All the auto cars are busy. Uh, yeah, I rolled a twenty. So, friend, computer, the eyeball will appear. Sorry, citizen. All nearby auto cars are reserved at this time. Please try again in six hours. I say thank you, friend, computer. Well, guess let's walk all the way to the elevator ourselves. You guys are carrying all this equipment out. We don't to discuss how you're really carrying forty bags of Algidos, but I suppose you guys have, like shoved them into your jackets, into your pockets. Everyone's carrying as much equipment as they can. No one's overburdened, uh, I would assume. Check your check what you're carrying. The forty bags of Algidos. You guys are like carrying around like arms full of Algidos. They're like fall. You have to keep picking them up. You guys are like hand some out as you're going along. Maybe maybe film some footage, like because you're gonna have to pass a lot of people. You're on foot anyway. Passing vending machines. You guys are like I said overburdened with Algidos. You want to do something with this material while you're on the way? Film yeah. Turn it into a promotional spot. I'm just like handing bags of algidums to random citizens and saying, you know, algidums, what they say about them is once you algeet to some, want to eat some sometime, other times. So roll a field weapons roll to record all this stuff. Once you roll this, will be the recording for the whole time. Ooh, I got a natural, natural one. one. You're really good at this com. You get the, you understand how this uh, communication recording machine. You understand the multicolor works. You hit record. You're going. You're good to go. You got visual. Pretty much as long as you don't do anything else with it. As long as you keep it on the rest of this mission. Uh, I think that I'll walk behind Gibson and um, Mac as they're like walking down the hallway, right. and handing out the bags of algidum saying their new catchphrases. Eat them! It's an order. Algidum, eat them. <laughs> <laughs> That's the slogan. Uh, of course, is he's got the mini nuke tucked under his arm, uh, carrying it like something precious. Just handing out bags of algidum while he's got this nuke tucked under his arm. You shoot all this. Yeah. You guys get some good footage on the way. Friend Computer is gonna love some of this. Citizens are not once usually ones to turn on free food anyway. It's almost everyone you give a bag of chips to happily obliges. It eats the algae on camera, smiles. They want to make sure you get good footage too. They don't want to be on footage with a, a troubleshooter team not obliging. They don't. They, for all they know, this is your mission. You know what I mean? You guys, this, your mission could be filming this commercial. They don't want to get in trouble. So everyone pretty much just does whatever you tell them to do at this point. Uh, so for all your questions, if you tell someone to do anything stupid, they're gonna do it. So all these citizens just kind of like follow along. Eat some chips, say whatever dumb thing you want them to say. You guys get footage all the way to the elevator. By the time you get there, you guys can be out of Algidum, Chris, unless you want to save some for yourselves. It's, you can keep it a small number now, enough to tuck away yourselves, or you can be gone, rid of them. I'd like us uh, to keep at least one per person so that we can keep our strength up in this uh, potentially right. hazardous so You battle. keep like one bag each at Delicious. least. 
Tucked away. If you keep more than that, just let me know. Yeah, emergency snack packs, you know? We're Always trying to take care of her. Making sure, making sure we got plenty of snacks for the journey. All right, so you guys are ready to go, but the rest of your LGMs are gone, so you no longer have the difficulty of carrying all the extra crap around. Down to the infrared. It's down to the infrared, so you know it's early testing period. Everyone in, as an infrared works in R&D sooner or later. But you did it as an, an infrared and as a red citizen, Max, so you know how R&D testing goes. The stuff down at infrared level is they test it there before they test it in red. And you've tested stuff in red, and that's usually not tested that well either. So you know that down here it's usually like this is like the first trial down here and you guys get like the slightly improved version and you you've seen the problems with that stuff so you know that down here it's gonna be whatever's down here could be it could be anything so you probably have the most information going into this ahead of time of what you're walking into it's a shit story. but you guys are gonna he head down through this elevator into an R&D sector where there's just rows and rows of experimentation rooms there's infrared citizens lined up waiting in line to go in these rooms but you'll see that there's a, an, an army presence Usually the army is more spread out, but the army is like concentrated. These army guards are concentrated in this one area, like keeping citizens away. And that appears to be the area you guys need to go. They're all wearing red uniforms, keeping the infrared, keeping Let's the infrared in. direct Let's out. Let's get this in and out. Camera out. Pointed at him. They're gonna see your badges. We say you're the you're here for the mess. Yeah, we're here for the mess. Uh, point us to it. All right, they'll yell, Captain, cleanup crew's here. An orange officer will approach. He'll look you guys over. So we don't know what's going on in there. Glad you guys are here to check it out. Get inside. Contact from computer or us. We'll look, so we know how to lock down the situation. Know what's going on inside. We really don't have much communication. The team in there is in a panic. Apparently they've lost two infrareds. The team in charge of the R&D shut it down. You can see them inside through the glass. So if you hurry in, they'll, they'll point to the door. It's right behind them. You guys head through the door into this lab. Yeah. Yes. All right. It's sort of a dual chamber thing. So there's one door, then a small area. That door locks behind you. And another door opens. And you're in the, a very familiar R&D. R&D testing area to you, Mac. Big empty room with a very thick glass on one end. You can see that through the very thick glass, two blurry figures in red outfits. You can't make out their features because the glass is too thick, but you can hear them through the loudspeaker. Like a 30 by 30 room. 30 by 30 by 30. Big room. This, yeah, this where you test stuff at. Uh, you guys will see a sort of translucent pile of goo on the floor. Inside this pile of goo is a six pack of B3 Classic. The new B3 Classic. The black can. Not the old style, but the new style B3 Classic. But a whole Six pack. Here's about 40 plastic cred, plastic creds strewn throughout it, and then through the glass you see two figures in red, like waving their arms wildly, uh, and they're trying to speak through the intercom, but you can't hear anything. It's all broken up. They're they're, they're obviously trying to say something to you, but the, it's crackly, like a uh, fast food, like a bad fast food drive-through mic. Quite make out what they're saying. It's very crackly. You can't understand it. They're definitely like very loudly trying to say something to you. That's, As the door I, closes behind you guys, you're alone in this room now. I just filled with excitement. I I say, Frank Computer can always award us with physical possessions, but we must save our brothers while we also take samples of this catastrophe. Gives and speaks up and says, I'm afraid we can't do that, Matt. That's not part of our mission forever, now is it? That's right. We need to observe what's going on here first. Why are they screaming? Let's uh, get a multi-tool kit on our side of the intercom and see if we can uh, repair it. Can we assess All right, so you want to open, open your multi-purpose tool kit? Seems to be locked. <laughs> But it seems to be uh, a pretty simple lock. It doesn't seem to require a key. It seems to be like one you could just prop open, but it seems like you need to bash it to open it, so I'm going to require a strength roll. No, okay. fuck that, that shit be an easy up, one. But I have an 18. But you rolled a 1, so it doesn't matter. That's a 1. <laughs> you, you a strong ass old lady! Yeah, old lady. You do the old lady strength thing. You hit it just right. Ba bam! Arm force she, like, hits it with the old lady like drops the toolkit on the ground from a, from a few feet off the ground and just pops right open. Inside are all the tools you need for basic repair and a long syringe with a metal needle, like a long metal needle to collect a sample. And all your other basic tools you need for repairs and things like that are around Alpha Complex. Things to tinker with bots, things to tinker with any other of your various support systems, other things you have in your, anything you have in your sheet basically that requires equipment. You have the equipment to fix it in this whole purse toolkit. I'll uh, attempt to fix this intercom with my <laughs> electronic engineering knowledge. 
I got a seven and I needed a three. So yeah, you're having trouble figuring out how to access this panel. It's, it seems to be like, because of the, the infrared section, everything's painted black, it's hard to find the screws. Everything seems to be installed from the other side for security reasons. So you came and find like a panel to a place to unscrew things from where you are. Can I hold the multi-purpose toolkit up in the air at the two red dudes through the window and be like, do you have one of these over there? They yell something back to the intercom and you see them like waving their arms around Wally, but you can't make up there saying you don't see them holding up anything resembling a toolkit. I'm going to point to class. the toolkit say, do you have every, anything like this over there? In there. Once again, crackly noise. This. Huh? Crackly noise, but nothing you? that helps you. This. This, this goes oh. on for quite some time, but oh. nothing happens that helps you. I'm going to turn to Gibson and say, I don't think that they have a multi-purpose toolkit on that side, and you need one over there to fix this. Well, that looks like that. the intercom's not getting fixed. On your comm link, you hear team leader... Greetings, troubleshooters. Your signal indicates you have reached the affected area. What is the current threat level? Yellow. Threat level yellow. The area goes into lockdown and alarm sounds over you. You hear the doors lock. You guys are now locked in this room. No one below yellow clearance can enter or leave. <laughs> At this point, you'll also notice that the pile of goo that contains that six pack and those plastic coins is slowly moving towards your group. Very slowly. Inching your way. You see next to it several packets of fugu tubes and two empty fugu tubes. I'd like to bend down with my long needled syringe and suck some of it up into the syringe. We have bioscience roll to collect a sample. A nine, and I needed a three. So, so as you're trying to collect this sample, uh, you're trying to suck it up the needle, but it, it even though it's moving very slowly, it moves around. It avoids the metal. Fuck. So like it, so as the needle goes towards it, it moves away, and you can't seem to collect it. It's dodging you. Anybody else want to try this? Yeah. The what if dodge me? I'll give film it to you. Me. Uh, if she can give me the needle to take the sample, this is the main fucking crux of this mission, as far as we know. Ugh. Gosh. Okay. Well, I did four, at, and that's. I mean, I'm the success. All right, you go at it real quick. Like when you stab at it, it moves away, but then you leave it there, and after a while, the goo comes towards it, and after after a while, it gets near the needle, and then you suck some up. You've collected a sample up into the needle now. You've got a small sample. I take the sample. I fucking immediately, as soon as I take it out, I wipe the excess off with my fucking cloth so it doesn't damage me or some somehow, whatever All right, immediately, me. your cloth is covered in this goo. Your, the cloth starts to vanish as it's being eaten by this goo. It's covered in goo. Now a, a goo the size of the cloth is there in your hand. It starts trying to wrap around your fingers. I'm going to zoom in a bit on yeah. his hand. Look at I need that. you to roll endurance when it starts to touch your fingers. Are someone you please get out. I don't know. Yeah. I don't think they were handed out, but someone please get out the uh, the glass vials of the uh, toolkit so we can confine this uh, blob. Roll me an endurance roll. Like I said, that should be a big number because there's no mod for that. But roll me an endurance yeah. roll to see if it affects you or not. I got a four I that's... assume that's way lower than your endurance. Yes. All right, so it doesn't paralyze you, but it's still covering your fingers, and it's slowly, like, inching up your hand, covering you. And you are taking acid damage, which is damage 8, so I need to roll that really quick as it starts to eat away at your hand. Oh, I rolled a 20, which is kill. Um, but it's just kill your hand. It's just on your hand right now. So your hand is dead. So this, everything, your, everything this goo is touching, your hand is... You can, like... The goo is, like, eating your hand. You start seeing it eating away at your skin. You start seeing your... You can, it's translucent. You see the bone, but then you start seeing the bone slowly disappearing too, so your hand is slowly being eaten away. It's, it's making its way up your arm slowly, inch by inch, very slowly. One of your hands is dead. That's crazy. Help. And it's spreading. It's gonna get worse. I think I might know where those uh, 40 plastic creds came from. Where do you think? I think that maybe this goo turns you into goo, and then all your stuff is inside the thing. So uh, I think that Max plastic creds are gonna be a part of the goo soon. I don't have any plastic creds, I'm in negative. 15 regular creds. <laughs> ah, ah, ah. Hands disappearing. Ah. Yeah. So yeah, he's up to the wrist now. He's got this whole hand. He's just floppy. He's gone now. I just have a drippy nub slap on the end. Ah. He just draws his uh, laser pistol and says, this is going to hurt back. Oh, I have an idea. Let me, <laughs> let me cut me. off his arm and then you use your laser to like burn his stump shut. And so you want to get some sort of like saw yes. out of your toolkit? Yeah, my multi-purpose He's got a saw in there. Get the off. Because my arm is being ate by this slime. We're trying to help. Do I have edge clippers? Yeah, you've got like you got anything you want to make a tool. Big chopper. Yeah, 
choppy thing. You got I'm big just scissors? I'm pull out my giant scissors and big choppy thing to chop off. Uh, Lumen arm for nothing. Please also collect these things in these glass vials that we were given by friend computer who knows all. Roll me a strength now, check to chop so off Max's arm with these giant scissors. Plus 18. So three, you need three in your numbers, AJ. So yeah, you did really well. This old lady comes down with a strength. She like elbow drops these scissors, chops right through your arm. We'll say close to your elbow. So you now have only half an arm. It's bleeding. You're in a lot of pain. Ah. But the ooze is just eating part of your arm. It's not touching you anymore. That part of your arm is on the floor getting devoured by this ooze. So oh. I want to laser to cauterize that wound. I'm going to pick the camera back up and uh, film, film Gibson burning the stump. So, um, it's going to be great trouble uh, footage. Yeah, I'm going to sort of aim to graze it with the laser blast. Yeah, you seem, you're pretty good with the laser. I'll let you roll. Thank you. Everyone here, and also uh, roll a five and succeeded by seven. You it burns shut. You're no longer bleeding. bleeding. You're still in tons Our of pain. Just give me like some sort of robot arm. Yeah, that's out there. You've seen it. You probably need an easy does it, friend. He needs the easy does it stat. You are in a lot of pain. Do you choose to take an easy I does it? I will take an easy does it because that is what I'm supposed to do. You're the happiness Even officer. I'm super happy right now. All right, you take the drug. <laughs> Thank you. All right, the drug relieves your pain. You're no longer in tremendous pain. You feel okay about not having an arm now. You don't oh, think it's right. a big deal, but you are suggesting as you always are at Easy Does It's. Hey Love Matt, it. why don't you try to collect some goo in a vial? That sounds like the best idea. Alright, how do you do that? Take some glass vials and try to scoop it up? I have the glass vials and... I'm gonna and zoom in on this. I use stealth to sneak up on the goo. <laughs> try to get uh, samples of this with my one arm. I'm going to pan over to the guys behind the glass. What are they, with the camera, what are they doing? They seem to have gotten closer to the glass, although they're still blurry. You can see their like, faces are pressed against the glass with like their hands up to their eyes. They're like watch, trying to watch very hard what you guys are doing. You can tell that the glass is blurry from both ends. I'm going to turn the camera back towards uh, Mac. Mac's that reaching for it. Uh, when you turn the camera back towards Matt, Mac, Mac, you'll also notice the scrub bot is heading this direction as well. I have a success by eight points. All right, so you like super fast scoop some. You got a scoop into the glass vial without getting on yourself, although it is dripping down the side of the glass vial. The scrub bot is heading into the goop though, and its brushes hit the goop and sort of like splatter it, and it sprays towards you guys. I need everyone to roll oh, Jesus Christ. an agility base, beat your agility base to jump out of the way and not get any goo on yourself. I failed. All right, so fail and a fail. You I beat failed. your base. All right, three fails. Gibson, you get some goo all over your full body. You get covered in it. You're right in the splash zone. Love, get some on the right leg. On your old lady right leg. Got some goo splashed up on you. Off the curb from this scrub bot. Mac, you get some on your right foot. So you're the most covered, Gibson. A little bit on you, Mac. A little bit more on you, Love. Do you all have goo on you now? Since I need you all to roll endurance rolls. Fuck. Nice. I succeeded by two. It should be an easy one to succeed. Yeah, we got it. I got that one. A natural one. So everyone succeeds their endurance rolls. So none of you guys are immediately paralyzed by this goo, but you are still covered in it. It is going to do some damage, which I'm going to roll now. 17 on an 8 is... No, it's not killed. Incapacitate. So, your limbs are temporarily incapacitated. Whatever whatever got splashed. So for you, Gibson, your full body is now incapacitated. Which means you're wounded, basically. It's, uh, it's melting your flesh. You immediately fall prone. You fall to the ground. You're unconscious. You can make no action until you're healed uh, to wound her better. If you're wounded or worse, you're not dead. So you're, you're, you're basically knocked out. Red Matt... Leg. My right foot. So you guys, just part of you, that part of you is incapacitated, wounded. You can't use that part of your body right now. It's now totally useless and being eaten by this goo. I would like to talk to the scrub bot and tell him to leave the room. All right, do you have the comm link? Yeah, I'm, I'm the officer. All right, so roll me, there's a, either a scrub bot found, there's a jacko bot. Two, and I needed a five. All right, it's gonna try to leave the room. It's gonna go to the door, and the door is, of course, not gonna open for it because it doesn't have high enough clearance. But it is gonna, like, keep bumping in the door. Okay. So now it's just by the door, like, continually walking towards the door that won't open. Um, I'd also like one of the scrub brushes that I have. I'd like to, uh, try and use that on my leg. You gonna try an atomic scrub brush your leg? Yeah, I'd oh, like no. this stuff to get off of me. Let me pull out my atomic scrub brush sheet. I Spray that plan, body but... cleanser on us, Max. Spray us with body That's cleanser. That's what I just said. I had a plan. I was no. trying to do this. So I want to do two things. One, I want to use the skin's core sample gun to take a sample of this goo that is currently eating my right foot. So I get another sample of this goo. Roll me a, roll me a field weapons to do that real quick. Because I assume you're going to do that before you do the thing with, your, with uh, love. Okay, I got a one. You're able to take a sample with it. Filthy. It has like the worst rating ever. That's not good. Uh, That's not clean. I want to use 
times that the whole spray can of body cleanser that we have on the team leader and love. Are right, you hosing right down with this body spray? Yes. All right, do you want to just empty out the whole can? Yeah, because right. he's... You hold down your leg and, and, and foots of the two of you guys. And you want to try an atomic brush all this goo off of everyone? Yeah, I got two. Here, Mac. Like, you know, we gotta help ourselves before we can. So, you put the camera down, but put it somewhere where it's still filming because, like, sit on the ground. Yeah, it's and... so far away from the goo, duh. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Um, you put it yeah. over there, and the goo's like still, like, slowly like, inching towards you guys. It was very slowly, but. Is of the glue, though? Like, the goo doesn't immediately have... vanish, but it doesn't hurt, I guess. But the, the goo, when you spray it, the goo doesn't go away. It's just like you spray the goo with cleanser. It just now has bubbles on it. Sure. So, you guys each take a brush into each hand. They're pretty unwieldy. They might take two hands to hold. Toilet paper roll sized battery in the middle that has an activation switch and everything. It's an experimental piece of equipment. I need you guys to roll field weapons to activate them. Seven and I needed a field. No, no, not even close. It was a 19. Oh, the 19 yard experimental is a total fail. Dang it. Which means it's going to do a damage 20 in a 15 meter radius. Yours doesn't explode, love. You just can't get it to start. You like hit it and it does like a thing like whir, 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 whir. It doesn't start. You like get a jumping moment where it doesn't start. But unfortunately, Max tries to start his up and it goes off like that, doing a damage 20 and a 15 rate twitch. It's going to be all of you guys. You're all close enough for this. Does that include our mini nukes? Fortunately, the mini nukes are in a protective casing <laughs> that they can't be set off unless they're activated properly. This explosion won't cause them to explode because they're in very protective casing. A damage 20 is pretty high. Yeah, you're gonna get killed if vaporized right now. Oh. You only get killed if I roll a one. <laughs> vaporized if I roll anything else. We're all dead. Yeah, I rolled a four. So you all get vaporized by this atomic scrub brush blowing up. The battery just explodes on this thing where you're trying to clean yourself off. You guys are all reduced to ash, vaporized. <laughs> but the goo remains. Camera catch that? Yeah, the camera's gonna catch that. It's gonna remain. It's gonna be totally ruined, but the, the memory card will remain. The brain of the camera will be there. Once the room was set on alert, no data was transmitted to any of your clones via comlink or any other method. Also, if you're an insect and you had any sort of brain implant that was viewing through someone's eyes and they died, that's of course gone with that person. You probably did see whatever happened up to that point, up to whenever whoever had the video eyeballs died, but that was in the briefing room. So at this point, you guys have no idea what's happened since that room was put on lockdown. But you are called to a briefing room to replace your clones on a mission. You do know, you do know, probably they were recently called on a mission. You you are in contact with your clones to know that they were. So we know that we're on a mission. Yeah, and you know that your clones were called on a mission recently, and not soon after you were called to replace them, which could only mean one thing: hmm. that they did not succeed in their mission and did not succeed in enough of a way that they are no longer with us. So you guys all meet in a briefing room. You you guys reconvene, not knowing what happened to your clone siblings, but here you are all together, so you can all meet right now for the first time ever in this briefing room shake hands say hello friend computer greets you gives you the information that she gave the last group your name you and clones are all together you're greeting each other you exchange names pleasantries you know what each other look like you're not old now you're a regular young person again love everyone's back to their normal physical states uh, since you're new clones so nothing weird about you if you had implants you no longer have an implant if you're old you're no longer old etc etc oh. you're not missing an arm or... yeah if you lost any limbs you now have those limbs uh, you're all together you're ready to go. You've been given instructions. Pretty basic. You're given the same jobs that your clones were given, so the same badges are issued. You are not issued a, an equipment list at all. You're not given anything as far as request form or not. You can go to PLC or R&D on your own and try to request things, but otherwise you're not given a form. You are just requested to re you know, report to a room where there's an emergency. Sans equipment. How, how much did we see? You saw nothing uh, visually. And audibly, you heard everything. If you had a comlink and you had a comlink tuned to one of your siblings, you only heard up until the quarantine was called. Like once once the threat level was yellow, that means anyone below yellow clearance couldn't have heard it. That was your communications were cut off right then. You might have an idea of the supplies that were lost and what might have survived. Probably. While you you will not get a new equipment list, you will get on the view screen. They may or may not have survived whatever happened to them. Get around, take me back to the star. Right, let's go to PLC. How are we yeah, gonna probably. get more stuff? We don't have a list to hand them. You're by yourself or try to request it. I mean, you have a team leader. You can yeah, request a form. This, yeah, we're gonna go down to the red clearance section. You go to PLC in this red clearance area, you leave the briefing room, yeah. try to get some supplies. Oh, uh, Lovar is uh, young again. Sidebar. Fuck, I need forms. Well, that's less of a PLC thing and more of an HP DMC thing. Good. I don't need the form to request a form, then. You will, because that's a different department altogether. No, we're just going to use uh, strength of will to try to go with you. All right, so you just wait strength. in line to get to the counter. Yeah. You get up to a counter and get a one-on-one -on -one with someone that works here. PLC. Are you here to do a purchase or 
you're here for a troubleshooting mission? Troubleshooting mission reinforcement. All right, let's need to we see your form. We request three containment suits. Yeah, and see that are form. colored our level. Yeah, it's the form. I don't have time for this. Just so show me your form. Yeah, we don't have a form. We 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 kind of need this now. And no uh, form, no goods, man. That's Frank Computer's rules. I gotta have a form. Can't just hand out stuff to just anybody. Well, not just anybody. I'm the team leader of this troubleshooting mission. That's Mike all. That's all very here. well and good, sir. But without a form, I can't hand out equipment. I don't know. You haven't already got your equipment. You're trying to get extra equipment. I gotta have someone sign for this stuff. Either fill out a I form. I listen. I come from a cloned lineage of respectable R&D agents, damn it. Now my team leader, who I'm supposed to follow the commands of, has requested these items to fulfill the Frank Computer's mission and there's no other higher authority than the Frank Computer. So, I fucking really forged some papers. All right, roll me a forgery roll. And I shove this in this man's face, and I try... Roll me the forgery first, and then you can roll a fast talk. I got a one. Forgery's good. You, like, grab a form from behind the counter, and you scribble on it really quick with a pen. Now try your try your fast talk to, this, to get this by really quick. I got a 12. So he looks at the form. Your forgery's really good, but you're not very convincing. Not so he like... looks over at your team leader, and he says, Are you going to sign this? Yeah, no, I'll take responsibility for it, of course. He shrugs and says, It's your head. And he pushes the form towards you with a pen. You sign the forged form, authorizing yeah. the equipment. All right, so that's up to you, Mac. What did you put on your forgery? What did you request? Three hazmat suits. Caution Three protective suits. suits. Yeah, to help clean up this mess, and that's it. You guys are issued three green protective suits. They only have them in green, apparently. The guy shrugs. He won't touch it. He's like, I, I can't touch that, but you want to... do you have any... Uh, Gibson pulls out his badge, his real badge. Uh-huh. Uh, tries to conceal it from the others and said, Listen, you got any red tarps that you give me real quick? I can pay you for them. All right, roll me a stealth. Uh, to hide your your orange badge. Roll surveillance, uh, Mac, and love to see the orange badge. There's a 17 total that they have to be. I got a 12. So no one sees you doing that. I need tarps enough to make sacks real quick. Six red tarps. Will you add it to the request part of the form? Yeah, no, I'll scribble it down real quick. We'll give you five red, sort of like blanket-sized tarps. All Picnic right. blanket-sized. Will be issued to you. I toss uh, a roll of red tape. <laughs> part of my standard kit to Mac R is, and say, all right, you and me and love, we need to arrange real quick to get these all in one so that we can bundle up these suits so that we don't have to touch them because it says here that they were going to issue these suits and now they are all fucking dead. All of them are dead. So you guys try to tape tarps onto yourselves as best you know, as possible? Tape tarps together so that we can carry it uh, and enclose the suits all together as one big old lumpy package. So we're like a cat. So you're, are, you're keeping the green suits? We're keeping the green suits. You're putting them in red packaging. Red tarps. We're wrapping them in red tarps. That way you can touch them. Correct. Meanwhile, while you guys are wrapping all of this up, in another part of Alpha Complex, two new hey troubleshooters are summoned for their first troubleshooting duty ever. Can this be a crossover episode of Bored and Drunk? That would be amazing. Uh, well, it's going to be a crossover episode of something. Now, both of you have been recently upgraded to red clearance. You did something to get upgraded to this clearance. You've got a better Better bunk, better food, better view screen, get more channels now. Your life's improved slightly from when you're an infrared citizen. Troubleshooting is one of the highest honors of any citizen. It's uh, how you serve for a computer outside of your regular work duty. So you guys have been doing your regular jobs, whatever service group you're assigned to, you've been doing work. But now you're being called in for a real troubleshooting mission. This is the stuff that separates normal citizens from above average citizens. This is your chance to prove yourself to for a computer for the rest of your citizens, your fellow citizens, your, your clone family, that you are something truly special. And luckily for you guys, you're the first of your clone family. No one in your clone family has died yet. So firstly, Ray R. Vac 1. Kind of short, brownish blonde hair, a little, little goatee, blue eyes. I'm about six foot tall. I'm a stocky build, I guess. So. It sounds like an excellent specimen. Front computer did a good I job. Excellent them. DNA. Those are obviously great looking clones. I'm in the armed forces. So mostly at your clearance level, you're doing a lot of guarding. You're guarding various labs, guarding doors here and there. You're just doing security duty, basically, the clearance level you are right now. So you recently got upgraded from infrared to red. The work you do is mostly on infrared level, but now you're a red clearance citizen, so you're like a high level. You know you're an officer down there. You go down there, you get to boss people around and like guard doors, and you can be a dick if you want to. You can kind of treat infrareds however you want. Not a bad job. Hit our cat one. 
small and wily like a cat. Orange and white streaks to the hair. A lot of freckles. Yeah, nimble looking. Like, okay. Wow. Yeah. Wiry, like tough. Like you could, you could strike really fast and quick. Right, like yeah. ninja. Sneaky strength. And I could crawl in tight spots. So you're not as big as some of the other clones. There are a lot of large clones in this alpha complex. That's what you guys look like. You guys have been broken away from your normal jobs. Where do you work there, Kit? Uh, research and design. So you yeah. get to see all kinds of new equipment for anybody else does. You get to test it, see how it works. Very exciting stuff. Both of you guys were called off the line today. So whatever you were doing, you were doing some gardening, you were doing some product testing, but you get called off the line. There's apparently an urgent job. You're going to be called to assist a group that's doing some troubleshooting. You guys will know troubleshooting is the m mandatory bonus duty. So the two of you are going to get called to a briefing room very quickly in order to join a team that needs your help. Apparently, there's a group headed to an area that is a disaster area that has been shut down due to an R&D accident. They need a group to clean it up, assess the damage, uh, collect a sample. They need you to meet up with them. You guys are going to be taking the place of two of their officers. Rayar Vac 1, you're going to be taking the place of their happiness officer. Kit, you're going to be taking place of their equipment officer. Now, if you've read your mandatory bonus duty packet, you know what that means, you know what, that, what all the things that applies to. If not, you don't. And it's okay to be confused, a lot of people are. A lot of people don't read their packets. That's just, that's life in, in this world. Some people don't read the information that's available to them. So you have these new jobs. You're going to be issued badges uh, and instructed to meet up with a team. Uh, and, and once you meet up with them, you'll be instructed to take those badges away from those members. They are apparently currently in PLC. They'll be sent there right away. You're going to be sent right behind them. Friend computer, the timing is perfect. You've been given descriptions of the people you're looking for. So I'll give a chance for Gibson, Mac, and Love will describe themselves. And that way you'll know who to look for. Gibson is a really striking character. He's a sharp, clean cut, it's like the famous hero Land O video program, Space Battles. It might, looks like a that title might Land be confused o. because of the old Reckoning lore. I'm sure we're all familiar with Land O. And he wears a billowing red trench coat. Also, you seem to be carrying a lot of equipment. You have a big trench coat to hide a lot of equipment, but like it's pretty bulky under there. You don't have a bag. So you'll be approaching this this group, and one of them is carrying a lot of equipment, but a very a large, striking individual. After that comes Mac. Uh, Mac, Mac is very clean, very clean person. Has a dirty blonde handlebar mustache that is very, very kimped. It's very tight. Wax very, with a twirl. It's wax with all the from Frank Computer and his re respective color grade. He has kind of a part. Hair is. Very kempt, very tight, very parted, very circular, very soothing. He works for R&D. And usually you can tell by the person's outfit what department they work for. Uh, although Gibson's hard to tell if he's army or what, but he's definitely armed like army. Max definitely dressed like an R&D guy. Love, mm. final member, also dressed as an in as classic white army white attire. Yeah, so, um, love our boy. Female presenting clone with brown hair that's tied up in a little handkerchiefy thing to keep that shit out of the way. All pragmatic all the time. Hair is a nuisance. Yeah, um, but yeah, hey, females are supposed to do this, apparently. Presenting. Yeah, and yeah, and it looked like I work for the army because I do. Army is yeah. like- She got some muscle. She's like Rosie the Riveter type. She's kind of okay. a buff lady, for sure. You look like you work out. Because I do. Yeah, you do. And, and you're pretty well armed. You're not as well armed, maybe, as Gibson, and not and maybe as well dressed. But you have the standard army garb, and you're pretty well armed. You have something on you. Have, I don't need to dress fancy. You have some equipment. Pragmatic. She's got the classic army camouflage of her respective color, which is red, <laughs> red, red. And these are definitely the people that were described to you in your briefing that you need to join their team. So it's now your chance to introduce yourself to them and claim these jobs, new members. Oh, I'll brush up to the group. And I introduce myself. My name is Ray R. I've been sent by Friend Computer to replace your happiness officer. And I say, I will be happy to relinquish my half of the <laughs> happiness officer to you. And I cover my hand with a cloth and shake his hand. Shake hands. <laughs> you relinquish the badge. So I now, super clean. clean. Yeah, double clean. You shake hands with, with a cloth on. Well, I trail it behind him and I, <laughs> I observe what just happened. I'm Kit Marquette. I'm here to replace the equipment manager. Whatever. This is a, oh. this is very welcome news. It's the rigidly gendered equipment guy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The guy is a gender neutral term. It's I like it's like dude. Your cisgendered uh, equipment, equipment person. Who's the '80s? Anyone could be a guy. So you're now in charge of all the equipment, of which you have none. Oh, well, except what you guys just acquired, I guess. Yeah. So you guys have some equipment, and you have a new equipment officer to hand it out. That's handy. 
I'm, uh, I'm glad that you're... So you guys show up just in time. They're like wrapping up a bunch of stuff as you show up. And Gibson says, I wouldn't look in here. Yeah. <laughs> when would be the right time to look in there? It's bad. Yeah. I assume when we get to the mission location. So I they hand you a large red package. I know I'm being vague, and I know I'm overstepping the boundaries <laughs> for bonus duty here, as you are the equipment manager. But I'm really going to have to ask you not to unwrap these until we get done there. And you will notice he's wearing a team leader badge, which he means he has the most authority of all of you. And he's loyalty officer badge, too. And loyalty officer, too, which means he's the mo- one can report you for committing treason most which easily as well. he is the most loyal to himself. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm going to respect the badge, and I will, I will respect it. I will just invisibly wipes his brows. <laughs> so do you take the package, I, I equipment officer? Watch up all the spots that he may have missed. Thank you, hygiene officer. I appreciate that. You do your best to keep what? us uh, clean, as uh, Frank Peter dictates. You accept the package, equipment officer? I'm going to leave the <laughs> things up boxes up. I'm going to look around uh, for other stuff, see if I need to organize anything. <laughs> You guys are at PLC. The only thing that you guys uh, have been given is, is apparently this one package that this guy's trying to hand you. You can request other things. You're at PLC. You can always ask for more items or, or purchase things with the money that you have. If you have credits. You can always purchase things here if you want something. But otherwise, you you know, your team leader wants you to carry this one thing, and that's it. Well, we gotta ca- carry it somewhere, don't we? Yeah, you're going so somewhere. Whatever. You guys don't have much information about the mission as they do, but you're instructed to assist them wherever they're going. How heavy is it? Do we all need to carry it? Or just like no, it's pretty one? light. It's, I mean, oh, okay. it's, it's okay. large. It seems like a large package, uh, like the size of several suits like folded together. So like the size of, the size of a suitcase, basically. I'm like, ah, I'll get it, and then I like, grab it all quick like, and try to be a macho with all the bigger yeah. people around me. It's not heavy, but it's only kind of awkward because you're small. I'm but you can carry it. it you balance okay. it just fine. You got it. We all say, wow. <laughs> all right, you wow. guys enjoy this new equipment officer. You guys want to grab anything else while you're here at PLC? Anything else to grab, so I'm just going to, I'm ready. You guys are ready? <laughs> you want to swing by uh, R&D and get anything? I would like at least three sealable glass vials. It's up to your equipment officer or your team leader to do that. Do you guys want to fill out a form? Sure. Let's make this official. Which one of you would like to fill out a form for this at the request of your, of this other, of now just of your happiness officer. Happiness and hygiene officer wants some vials. Does anyone oblige? I don't have any vials. What are these vials for? Lots of vials. Well, just three. Three for all of us in containment unit suits, because then we can obtain samples and further benefit the knowledge of what we're trying to fucking do here as uh, troubleshooters coming into this crazy mission. What is the situation? What happened? It's oh, man. You didn't know? hard to describe. <laughs> hard to describe, too, but kind of got transplanted into this crazy we lost. We lost communication with the team that was our clones. And we have been issued because presumably they have all died. So we have no knowledge beyond the original mission parameters, which were that there has been some sort of containment accident, that we are to contain it, obtain samples of it, report back to friend computer with a lockdown level, and generally uh, make sure that this situation is brought back under control, which clearly the previous team catastrophically failed to. I'm sure we're up to the desk. Well, listen, with the addition of two more fine troubleshooters, exactly. I'm sure we're going to get the job done. I've only known these great troubleshooters for all the 15 minutes, but if their clone lineage is any example of their true character, then these other people tried as hard as they could to successfully complete the mission and weren't able to do it because it probably is a dire and important mission, which hopefully we will be able to now complete with two extra awesome troubleshooters. This concludes the current mission recording. Friend Computer thanks all citizens for their complete and undivided attention and reminds you that listening to the next episode of Dungeon Complex is mandatory.
episode of Long Distance Dungeons and Dragons Dinner Theater was sponsored by our fans and friends on Patreon. Donate today. Keep Long Distance Dungeons and Dragons Dinner Theater alive.